Blackbusters. What's cracking with the family? <sighs> we are back. This is Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. Mm-hmm. I am your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. and this is my co-host. Today, I, I got to be me. I'm multi-tone today. Multi-tone. I'm multi-tone. Yes, sir. Covering multiple movies. Multi-tone. And that's what we're doing today, man. Mm-hmm. We're getting straight to it. We're, we're, we're doing something different on Blackbusters today. We're, we are going to cover three films that we've already blackbusted up and three films we've already done. And that is Men's Society, Boys in the Hood, and Juice. We're going to sit down and talk about all three films, compare all three films, and discuss what the good things we like and the bad things we like mm-hmm. or a bad thing we don't like. And um, which, so, which, which, in our opinion, is the best film out of the three and comparing the three. Like, you know, yeah. break, break down, like, you know, the uh, the storylines, the characters, the performances and all that. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a, I think it's important because uh, uh, it's a multi-tone and I have different perspectives. We have things, different opinions. Different uh, opinions for sure. Um, and some we have some similar too. But we going we 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 want you guys in the comments to discuss and and jump in on the conversation as well and give mm-hmm. us your two cents comments and all that. So uh, I think it's important to call out, especially we love all of these movies, facts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's interesting sitting as a black film critic, right? There's no precedent for what we do. Right. Right. Like, True. you know, we review the movies. Yeah. Sometimes we talk about what we love or what we don't love. You know, we give a rating, we give a star, like just we love it all. But if we gonna wanna if we wanna go through this exercise of ranking, you know, then sometimes you have to say something is better than another. Right. We love all the films. We love them all. Right? Like, you know. It's hard for me. This is not an easy this is, episode. It's not easy. It's it's right. not easy. I love it. Because I love I love ranking, right? Like in my mind, like I'm I'm a ranker. So like I'm one of those guys. Like back when I went to the barber shop, you know, I'm shaving my shit now, like you, right? But I'd I'd want to argue, you know, Biggie, Jay Z, or Nas, right? Like you know, yeah. I'd want to argue Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, right? right. Like I love that that part right. of it. And so here we are, you know, with films, things that we love. Me trying to play the same game, and, and, and I'm I'm a, I'm kind of the, the opposite. Um, I don't, especially with film, especially mm-hmm. with film, because I'm more like, man, they all great. Yeah, leave them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> they I, all great. I, I, I sit down, I sit down and watch them uh, all at the same time, and not mm-hmm. at the same time, but like I'll watch them. I haven't got tired of these movies, and they're all 30 years old mm-hmm. plus. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're great movies. I don't, in order to say which which is the best, you have to kind of critique the other. Yeah, and it's hard for me to do that because I love all these films, damn near equally, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, at least these three. There's yeah. other classic films that I could be like, yeah, that's a classic. And I love this film, but it ain't mm-hmm. fucking with this one. Yeah. Um, it's difficult. Like, like, like if I, you bring up a very good point because it's like critiquing art, right? right. And then it, it forces you to like nitpick. Nitpick. But sometimes like something is better, but like, I'm not like in the art, for example. Like I'm not, you know, but if I went into a museum and there was like a Van Gogh and the Mona Lisa, like I get the criticism of like, why would you even want to argue about which one is better? Right, right. Like you know, right. like they they just both are what they are. Ferrari or uh, or Lamborghini. Yeah, like you know, like mm-hmm. they you know perform the same, but they you know look the same. You know, so I get that point. So right. basically, I mean, for me, my my approach is how I feel about these movies. Yeah, right. Like you know, mm-hmm. this is just like my opinion, your opinion, mine. Opinion. Yeah, yeah, this is what I feel about it. So right. not you know what's not what's better. Or best or worse, but what I feel is impact or mm-hmm. important. So that's that's how we're we're doing it. Right, right. Wish you the best. <laughs> Wish you the best too, man. <laughs> Wait, the best, may the best film yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. Nah, uh, not really, man. Because uh, all like I said, I, th- these are just our opinions, mm-hmm. and we want we want you guys to show yours as well. Um, Which film do you feel like is most impactful? Ooh, out of. Out of let's start from Boys the, in the Hood. Let's start from Boys in the Hood being 91. Uh-huh. Um, Juice being 92. Uh-huh. Menace being 93. Yeah. What's what's been the most impactful? Uh I will say. Maybe Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. I think if I had to rank the three, Boys in the Hood, Menace, then Juice. Yeah. Juice wasn't as impactful yeah. as uh 
the first two. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was impactful though. But it wasn't not as, as impactful in my opinion. Um, uh, Boys in the Hood came first. Mm-hmm. Pause. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, um, but uh, and Menace came. Uh, Menace. Uh, how about they come out? Yeah. Came out. Same shit. Paul debuted. <laughs> debuted. Yeah, released. Two years later. Yeah, that's, that's close, yeah. Paul debuted. Yeah. Debuted, <laughs> debuted like a motherfucker. Uh-huh. Um, debuted <laughs> in 93 and Boys in the Hood debuted in 91. And uh, I think that those the, Boys in the Hood was uh, a great film. Mm-hmm. Let's just start there um, from, from front to back. Uh, pause. <laughs> but uh, from start to finish. Right. Um, and it was just a dope ass film. It, it felt good. It was it was traumatic, of course, mm-hmm. um, but it was very real. Which is it was just very traumatic when you deal about hood. When you, when you talk about hood, hood and trauma go mm-hmm. go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of trauma in this film. A lot of unfortunate stories being told, but they're very real, and they and they they exist still to this day. Yeah. Um, that's why I think the the movie if the movie came out it's ninety one if the movie came out in two thousand twenty three it would be just as impact um if the movie hadn't been made before it would be just as impactful yeah yeah um because now, now you don't have a movie but you have snowfall snowfall was big yeah and it just ended a few weeks ago mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. um snowfall was big and uh, it was like a TV show based off basically boys in the hood in, in a sense yeah yeah um. So I, I I think Boys in the Hood was probably the most impactful because I think it started a little younger mm-hmm. and Menace was like the part two of Boys in the Hood. Yeah, if you really really had to give me parts, uh, if Boys Menace Society was basically Boys in the Hood part two, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would say Boys in the Hood first, then Menace second, and then Juice third yeah. as far as impact. Yeah, I think. I think Minister Society is, is a raw mm-hmm. filmmaking, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think The Boys in Hood is more polished, right? Okay. Um, and so it really kind of depends on how do you want your truth, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want the, your truth presented in the way that it's that it's presented in Minister Society, or do you want your truth the way it's presented in Boys in Hood? Right. Like, you know, we're giving you a dose of reality. How potent do you want the dose to be? Right. 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 And Menace of Society is a very potent. Very dope. potent. Yeah. Concentrated. Concentrated. Mm-hmm. Versus no. Boys in the Hood gives you more timeline. Um, I feel like I get a chance to get to know these characters and their in their background and who they are more so than Menace of Society. Mm-hmm. Right. I think Minister Society gives us our main characters, but doesn't give us a whole lot else that isn't presented in narrative. Right. Like right. Kane's narration in that movie does all the work, tells you who it is. But in, you know, Boys in the Hood, you see who Doughboy is. You see his past. You see his present. You have a sense of who he is, of who his who his mother is, you know, Ricky, et cetera, et cetera. So I think all of that polish of storytelling, I think it was just a better overall script. Um, and that's why I think Boys in the Hood is is, is more impactful. Um, I'm in agreement that I think Menace is, is probably second. You know, and I, I don't think this is West Coast bias, mm. but I do think that, like, Juice is kind of powered by Tupac, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, and right. um, without him, like, you know, the, the movie does lose some of the wind within its sails. But I think Boys in the Hood, and I also think, like, the trajectory that that movie put a lot of its cast on, right? Like, you know, like, Lawrence Fishburne, even though he had done some work before King of New York, but homie was at Pee Pee Wee's Playhouse. He was Curtis Cowboy. Like, you know, he He went on. Curtis Cowboy, yeah. Um, What Cuba's Gooding, what Cuba Gooding Jr.'s career became, Morris Chestnut, Nia Long, um, Regina King. So I just think, like, Boys in the Hood was a, was a was a bigger moment. It made a bigger splash. Not that Minister Society didn't or Juice didn't, but I think I think Boys in the Hood is 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 the big splash. I think I honestly think the big splash would be Menace, but uh, it's almost like this is how 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 see 
I, I just thought about this as you were talking. Because mm-hmm. um, at first I couldn't say which one was better, honestly, to me. Uh, I think it's a very short, I think it's a very small margin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Menace is better because it's the little brother that's a little bit more athletic than the older brother. Mm. The older brother went to the league. Uh, older brother went to the league. Um, and he's a he's a he's a, a role player. You know what I'm saying? He's nice. He was the one that the older the younger brother looked up to. Mm-hmm. And he went to the league and he's he's in, he's in the league, but he's like a role player. And the young brother comes to the league killing. Yeah. And he's a, he's the older brother is five years in the league and he's a role player. The other brother's two years in the league and he's already went been to all star game. Now let me ask you yes. a question. Mm-hmm. On, in, in a fair answer, mm-hmm. which film do you relate more to? Ooh. Ooh. Because the argument that I'm trying to get at, I don't want to step on the argument. I'm probably already mm-hmm. revealing my hand. But I think how you feel about Boys in the Hood versus Menace to Society has a lot to do with which film you relate to, right? Which one feels realer? Because if, if Menace to Society feels very much like your upbringing, your neighborhood, and who you are, it's just going to resonate with you in a in a way more so than Boys in the Hood. Even if Boys in the Hood is technically a better film or, you know, direct, you know, whatever, it almost kind of feels like where you're anchored emotionally. I'm very much anchored in Boys in the Hood emotionally, right? So it's not without my own personal bias that I think it's a better film. I grew up in the neighborhood where Boys in the Hood is set. I just, I feel it. Right. So much so that it probably makes me kind of Heisman Menace to Society mm-hmm. because yeah. I'm not as emotionally connected to Menace to Society the way I am to Boys in the Hood. So I asked the question, which film do you relate to more? And I know that like it, a lot of it resonates for you, you know, for yeah. both films. Well, which one re- resonates I'm, with honestly, you more? I can. Uh, it, it, Boys in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Boys in the Hood relates to me more. Um, you know, we did this a few weeks back. We discussed it with Brother Darrell. Um, that uh, I was definitely Trey. And when I watched the film, I I, I watched the film before I became Trey. Mm-hmm. You know, outside of me, you know, like I, I, my mom sent me to my father. Um, at thirteen, I watched I watched Boys in the Hood when I was ten. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So. Uh, I fast forward years later, um, I'm watching Menace as a as 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 I'm just moving. No, actually, I was still living in L.A. I was still living with my mom, and and I, I remember we bought it. We bought it on the three dollars. We used to buy the bootlegs. Mm-hmm. I watched Menace on bootleg, um, cause that's the only way I can get it. My mom right. wasn't. I was send it wasn't let me go to the movie theater to watch it. Right, right. Um, but yeah, man, I resonate more with Boys in the Hood, honestly, because. I was. I remember being that that age where I was being around all the hood homies, and we were deciding on whether where we were going to go. Mm-hmm. It was a conscious. It was a conscious decision for me not to game bang. Yeah. So not so for me to hop out the car like Trey did. That would have been me. I would. I would. Hey, bro, stop. Like, pull over, bro. Let me out. I would have been that guy. Um, based off because uh, the Furious Styles was was a hundred percent like my father. Yeah. Almost very. Very he he wasn't a square. Mm-hmm. Furious wasn't a square. You no. know what I'm saying? He uh he was he was straight edged. You know, yeah. but but the way he talked, talking to his son about uh, mm-hmm. about you smashing and having sex and shit, and like you got you got them condoms I gave you, like he wasn't no square ass dad. He yep. wasn't a Bible thumper like Kane's grandfather was. Correct. You know what I'm saying? He Correct. was more like I'm a I'm telling you the right and the wrong, and I'm gonna let you make your own decisions once you get of age. That's the father that I had too. So I can relate to boys to very much so. Mm-hmm. Menace, so Menace, I relate to as well because Menace was it started even though they both the movies start off when the main character was a little boy, mm-hmm. but it skipped past a lot. And there was a couple scenes where with in Boys in the Hood they were they spent more time being boys. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying young yeah. boys that yeah. is. Um, and Menace there was only a, a couple. There was only one or two scenes of him as a little boy at his dad's house and his mother's house before he became. He fast forward him being eighteen, right? So that's the, that. That is a difference. But I do remember. At, by the time I was eighteen, I was in college and I was on the right, on the on the on the right, on the was a straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. But so I can relate more to boys because that was more so I was involved in that lifestyle at that time. Yeah. At that age. Yeah. Um, they were still in high school, even through at the end of the movie. But uh, 
Menace, Menace was very brutal. It was very brutally honest. Mm-hmm. It was very, um, like you said, potent, yeah. very gritty. And I definitely can relate to that too. Because I felt, I rem- it, it reminded me of, for example, in 91, I was 10. But in the movie, the movie was like 80 something. Mm-hmm. 84? Mm-hmm. When the movie was set in 84? At the beginning. Yeah. So by the time they were in high school, it's like 90 something. Yeah. I remember Menace's society reminds me of more like uh, my upbringing, the way we dressed, yeah, the way we walked and talked and shit like that. So even when I was in middle school, elementary, middle school, beginning of high school, Menace was for sure. Dickies, wife beaters, crocus sacks, you know what I'm saying? Um, niggas pulling up at you at the light. Like that's I've never I've never been carjacked before, but I know niggas who have. Yeah, I know homies who have. And their brothers got killed in the carjacking. Yeah, yeah. You know I think that's kind of like it reminds me of like what what Watsomi Kwan was talking about when he was here, and we were talking about like how Boys in the Hood is a is a a film that's all about the hope of getting out, right? Yeah. And Menace to Society is about what if you don't get out, right? Wow. Um, Boys in the Hood. It's filled with hope, right? Like, you know, like it's almost like that little like text that they put at the end that like Trey ends up going to Morehouse. Morehouse. It makes you feel better mm-hmm. about what you just watched right. with Brandy on her way. It like those that Spellman. Spellman. Mm-hmm. Those two things make you feel better. Um Minister Society doesn't make you feel better. At the end, there's no happy ending. I knew you were going to say this because mm-hmm. you said when we when we reviewed uh, Menace, you was like, "Is I didn't like this film." Yeah, I don't say uh, PTSD, <laughs> PTSD, PTSD, tone. PTSD tone was your name back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's another reason why you're like, because you said that before we put on air, before we went on air, mm-hmm. you was like, uh, "Boys in the Hood is demonstrously better than Menace," and yeah. I disagree. Yeah, but I it makes sense coming from a person that didn't like Menace. Yeah. It's like so. I loved both, so I feel like mm-hmm. my I'm this, the bias isn't there. I have no reason to really choose one of the over the other, but you do because you didn't really like Menace. And you know what? Like, and I think a, a good part of it with all of these movies that you know, whether it be these three that we're talking about now, or all the movies that you do, your perspective is important in terms of your appreciation of of the film, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, so if you ever you know, had, like, trouble dating, like, in your 20s, a movie that, like, is all about troubled people dating in their 20s, you're just going to feel it more, right? right? right. And so, you know, like, for you, your background, your perspective, your people, I imagine that, like, Boys in the Hood and Minister Society both feel like home. Right. Right? Facts. And because they both feel like home you're able to look at them with a different lens and perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Menace of Society does not feel like home for me. <laughs> it feels familiar, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. Menace of Society is the L.A. I always wanted to avoid. Right. Menace of Society is the L.A. I, like I never wanted to venture into. Never quite felt comfortable when I was there. Mm-hmm. Boys in the Hood feels much more familiar. It's, I know the rules here. I right. know how to navigate here. I know what to expect here. Not that pain and trauma can exist everywhere, but with Boys in the Hood, I feel safe. And I think that's probably why I gravitate to Boys in the Hood because Minnesota society makes me feel uncomfortable. Yes. Because of the reality of what's being portrayed there. Uh, it makes total sense. Does that I make pro- sense? I promise you, when you said that, when you first said that, however long we did mm-hmm. uh, Menace, I was like, why is he saying he didn't like he didn't like Menace? Mm-hmm. How could you not like Menace? Because mm-hmm. it's such a from from the the art, from the story, and from the directing of it, it's a mm-hmm. great film. Yeah. I feel like it was shot very well. It was shot clean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the it was written very well too. It didn't seem like it was just a, some street ass shoot 'em up bang bang film. There was a lot of messages in there. Yeah. I think every character played its part. There was you needed it was a great, just like boys, it was a great film that these characters needed to be there because they made sense. I know there's kids that grew up in the same neighborhood, on the same street, that some grew up to play football, basketball, and become stars. Mm-hmm. Or 
Some some grew up to play to, to play football and basketball, and then they quit their senior year of high school and never went anywhere with it. Mm-hmm. Some didn't play any sports; they just was regular kids, just trying to live life and avoid the street life. There were some other kids that were um, kids that just wanted the game bank. That's mm-hmm. all they knew. There were some kids that were just um, militant, and then they were going to do good in school and good in life because their parents made them. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's all in that world in Menace. And it's all in that world in Boys, too. So I yeah. feel like they're very similar films. And so yeah. it's hard for me to decipher which one is better because I can relate to both. I, I lo- and Menace had Mr. Butler mm-hmm. in that. And Mr. Butler was the Furious Styles. He just wasn't yeah. in every other scene. It's just, you know, like, and this is why on that episode I was PTSD, t- you know, tone. Mm-hmm. Because Menace just reminds me of my childhood in so many different ways, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know... I look at like the way they was dressed in in Menace, yeah. and it just reminds me of people that I knew. But like Menace makes me sad because it's just, like it's Menace, just, it's depressing yeah, a little bit. The people that Menace reminds me of all had bad arcs and bad trajectories, mm-hmm. right? Like you know, so it's just like I just I don't like to go there. Like what's funny is, is that there's nobody like Trey that I've ever met. <laughs> In in real life, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, Trey's almost this character that exists. Like, Kane is real. He feels real. Mm-hmm. He feels visceral. He feels like somebody you know. Trey doesn't, right? Like, he doesn't feel like anybody you know or ever met. Like, it's obvious that Cuba came from the Valley, right? Like, you know, <laughs> like, right. like it's, it's obvious. But we understand his character and what he represents. But just, like, he's not as real as Kane. The only thing is, Trey does exist, He's just very small. Yes. His, 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 and from the hood, for example, I got a buddy, my boy, shout out to my boy, Jaron O'Neill, man. Mm-hmm. I say his name because he's a, one of my closest friends, man. Um, we don't talk often, but we used to be roommates. We used to be coworkers and roommates. And we we kind of grew up together. And even though we didn't, we weren't friends growing up. We became friends as adults. Mm-hmm. But we from the same neighborhood, went to the same, um, uh, the same elementary school and everything. Um, and we ended up by the time we became friends, we re, we became friends when I became older. And I moved back to LA, and he's from born and raised in LA, South Central. We went to 42nd Elementary School with me, graduated from um, um from Crenshaw High School. Uh, and he's never got caught up in the gang life, he grew up on Fourth Ave his whole life. Mm-hmm. And um, his best friend is more, more into the street shit than he was. But he went to he played basketball for his church. He he he's a he never sagged a day in his life. He never had a never had braids. Never, yeah, he's yeah. always been straight laced. And if you meet him, you'll meet him one day because, like I said, like I want you to meet him because he literally would, in my opinion, be Trey. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm Trey as well. I told you about, but I was more involved in shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying I was the guy that the dudes in my neighborhood, the older homies in my neighborhood, mm-hmm. just knew I was about to be the next coming of what they were. You are like your genome, like your tray, but it's just like, you know, Furious Styles wasn't a gangster. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Furious Styles wasn't a generational crip. You know what I mean? Like, or, or, you know, a a multifamily blood, right? Right. That was never in the cards for Trey. Mm -hmm. Never in the cards. He never had to choose whether he was going to bang or not. Right. You did. Right. Right. Like you have to make a choice, Mm -hmm. which is a menace to society. Right. right? Like, you know. Even though my father was Mm -hmm. furious. Exactly. Even though your father was furious. It's a blend blend for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like you, the environment and the people. And this is what makes what you do so awesome and beautiful, man, because you hold all of these people and experiences in high regard. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you've pushed past the pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, mm-hmm. and still tell I get good it, stories. I you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you still find, you still um, hold these people in high regard and high reverence. Right. Even through your art now, like, you still, mm-hmm. like, amplify their stories. And, right. And I think the difference between us is, is I just, it just, it still hurts for me. Right? Like, nah. you know, like, it's still, like, I can't get past. I remember one time, this is fucking crazy. Um... I smoked a little reefer, mm-hmm. <laughs> smoked a little grass, mm-hmm. and went to like like Universal Horror Nights, right? Like right. you know where they do the mazes and shit like that. Yeah, I've been through these shits for years, right? right. Like you know, 
always a bunch of times. But this time I just happened to be high when I went in. And I walked in through these mazes and I actually got a look at what the fuck was happening uh-huh. in these rooms. And it was like, this is fucked up. Right? Like, you know, we got this guy, his, you know, his intestines are out, and this person's being electrocuted, right. and this motherfucker's being stabbed with uh-huh. blood and it's just yeah. everywhere. This motherfucker's hanging from a noose. Right. And through that, like, through those eyes, I was like, I don't like this fucking depiction. Right. I don't want to be entertained by by this death and murder and shit. And that's almost kind of like the kind of eyes that I bring to menace to society. It's too real. It's based on too much stuff. I can't I can't separate the reality of the film and the, the memories that it brings up to appreciate it the way it is. So I like I kind of like have to like put it in a compartment. Right? Like you know, yeah. it's it's it can, because it's diff, it's difficult because it's so real. Like it's it's so real. I mean like the needle for menace is almost kind of like that. Even though I know it's acting, it just feels documentary, right? Like you know, because yeah. just the people. The- and that's you, you, because um, we haven't. We're now we haven't gotten to like why you say this is better in detail. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned some stuff earlier that I'm gonna wait for you to say on on air. Mm-hmm. But uh, I agree with you. It, it's a it's a it's a pleasurable pain to go through. It, it reminds me maybe because I survived it, mm-hmm. and but I understand it and. I look back in the in growing up in LA, you were one it's not no, it's just not one of two kids, but there's a few options. Some there's no option. Mm-hmm. Uh, one option is you don't have any. Like your parents are on drugs, you grew raised by your grandparents that can barely uh keep you in the house. Right. And now you on the porch. You I mean you off the porch and you on the block with the homies. And those are the most people those people are, are you care more about what they think than your your, your grandparents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and your parents aren't around. You might not. You might not have never known your mom. I mean, your your father and your mom is on drugs or something like that. I know people who grew up that way. Yeah, who never has seen what their father ever looks like. So when in the man, they don't have a coach. They don't play any sports. So they don't go to church. So there's no reverend. There's no deacons. There's no older brothers. And the older brothers who are there, they're doing what you end up doing too, which yeah. is game banging and doing selling dope and shit like that. Or they're dead, or they're in jail. So, and you might you might feel like, damn, I don't want to do that because my brother got my brother got killed, or my brother went to jail. Mm-hmm. I don't want well, I don't want to do that. But sometimes, a lot of times, these boys don't know what else to do. Right. I have seen that pattern. Seen. That's not necessarily the good pattern, but mm-hmm. I don't know another pattern. And in some reality, some people could think about could could think you're uh, oh you're just that's a, that's a cop out. Mm-hmm. You're lying. So think about it. Some of these kids don't have. Outlets don't have, excuse me, anybody to to pay it to pay attention to the right way, mm-hmm. to show them how to get out the hood, yeah. how to go to school, yeah, yeah. how to use school yeah. or use the army or the military to get out of your environment. Some people don't have that access or don't even know. It's, everyone is t- everyone around them is telling them the opposite. Be from the hood, sell this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying it sounds so cliche, <clears throat> but it's true because. In, in these three movies, the characters that have a chance are all the characters that have something to do, right? Across Boys in the Hood. Real quick. Men, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I, I know I'm cutting you off. I just realized, should we be talking about Juice right now? Well, I was going to bring it in because, like, a part of it, I think, is our West Coast bias, right? I think if we had <clears> somebody here... From from New York, from Harlem, mm-hmm. I think they could speak to you know. No, I want I want to speak to it because I think I think we should. I we should think, be then we should. I think we should be talking, be about, talking about not three films but two. Yeah, we should either be talking about Menace and Boys and uh, um and then uh, Juice mm-hmm. and or uh, New Jack City or or uh, but the the three maybe we should do because there's Juice and then. There's a movie that I that I saw coming up, um, uh, New Jersey Drive. I thought about that too. Like that, 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 that that's a real indie. They own, it might have, it might not even been indie. It might have yeah. been like a a, a a big picture film, but that New might Drive be a better comparison because to New Jack City, and not because of East Coast or West Coast. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's so much to unpack with Boys and Menace and Menace that, and honestly, honestly, it's not a new, it's not a a, a coast bias because. Mm-hmm. Juice is very much boys in the hood. Yeah, Juice is very much men's society, but it's just it's it's different yeah. in the sense like um, I feel like boys boys 
and menace are strictly just talking about specific types of lifestyles mm-hmm. in LA, in the West Coast. And I think Juice is a great film. I love Juice. Yeah. I think yeah. it was cast it well. Yeah. I think, but I think New Jersey Drive is probably our clockers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Clockers could be a good one too. Either it could be um juice and because yeah. I think somebody this is gonna be is this gonna be a a a a this gonna be some we're gonna lose something mm-hmm. talking about all three at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And juice is so I agree. Um and juice is so unique. Like juice is almost kind of like unique, like New Jack City is is unique. Right. See, like New Jack City is not a hood movie to me. It's a it's a crime writers. movie. It's a crime film. It's a crime film, right? Yeah. Like you know, so it, so a comparison of New Jack City and Boys and Hood, Menace to Society. New even Jack City make is sense. like deep cover. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a crime drama, right? right. Um, juice and Clockers or Juice and New Jersey Drive. And the reason why, like, I almost want to put Juice separately, is. Because there's nothing like it. Because to me, like, Juice is like a psychological drama, right? Like, mm. you know, because the whole film spins around one dude in the crew going crazy, right? That's like, you know, what it is. just one and dude. It's not, it's not the same as Menace. That's not the way Menace is. That's boys. not the way Boys is, there's right? There's no tyrant right. in the crew. Exactly. Like, O-Dog doesn't lose his shit and get to killing Kane and everybody and, and, else, right? Like, you know, Doughboy doesn't turn homicidal maniac, right? It's like killing his homies. Yeah. So so that's what makes Juice unique is like... The story is not enough. Yeah, it's not yeah. the same. It's almost like you try to force it into a hood, kind of like try to make it a hood movie, but it really is like a kind of a unicorn of black film. It takes place in the hood. Right. It's not a hood tale, I think. Like the only reason why I think it is is because that story isn't often talked about. But there are dudes in the hood mm-hmm. that snap that that, that Judas that turn into Judas's. True, true. You know what I'm saying true. That's where niggas start snitching on each other. Yeah, or start like, um, or or a lot of times, especially in L.A., think about the gang stuff. A lot of, a lot of times. Gangs started, I mean, gangs mm-hmm. evolved or expanded into homies that didn't see eye to eye. Yeah. And they went their separate ways and they started two different gangs. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I we get all it. used to be part of this hood. Now we broke off and became this now. Yeah. So that a lot, but before that happened, a lot of homies was probably killing each other before they went out and became enemies. Yeah. I so get it. imagine if it's Q, Steele, mm-hmm. Raheem, a Bishop, Rodimez, all these niggas are all homies. Mm-hmm. They're all part of the same crew. Yeah. But Rodimans and Bishop start tripping and they mm-hmm. break away. And then Bishop start breaking away even from from uh he Bishop ends up killing Rodimans and then he start killing mm-hmm. uh Raheem and now he's on his own and and stealing still heals up. Yeah. And Q and Steel starts doing some other shit and now they're opposing yeah. hoods now. It's almost like if like Oda, Kane, like Stacy and Sharif decided to Rob the Korean grocery store, and O Dog kills the you know the clerks, and then and then shit and they crew goes goes wild and whack. Or O Dog steals the tape and showing the whole hood. Yeah, and Kane, I got to get rid of this nigga. Yeah, yeah. Kane okay. is over here. Mm-hmm. This nigga like he's tripping. He and because O Dog and Bishop have some similar qualities. It's interesting. Very o- few, but a few. O Dog. Bishop, and this is okay. This is probably maybe the last thing that I'll say since we're here, especially if we're going to focus in on oh, on, on boys. boys and menace. We'll still do juice, but yeah, uh, on another time. A lot of people make when they talk about Tupac, they make the comparison to Biggie, right? Mm-hmm. It's always Tupac and Biggie. This right. comparison, Tupac and Biggie, Tupac right. and Biggie, and it makes sense because the two are you know the biggest stars at the time, and they're connect. Well, interesting point. They're connected through the beef. They're connected with the with the fact that they both died young, but it's a, I think an interesting and maybe more suitable comparison to compare Tupac to Ice Cube, right? Mm. Because they have a lot of very similar characteristics, right? They both debuted as actors in these okay. in these films. Okay. Biggie never acted, right? right? Right. They were both like at the at their times on the timeline. Ice Cube was considered the biggest rapper in the game. 
right? Right. And Boys in the Hood happens right on the cusp. He's just left NWA, and he's about to blow up as a solo artist. Mm-hmm. Same can be said with Pop. He left, digi- he left Digital Underground. Yeah, and he was working on his debut album, right? They both have these, like, you know, scenes, movie-stealing, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 scenes acting right. in, in these particular movies. Um, they both had beef, right? Like, you know, I mean, West Side Connection, Q started a whole crew dedicated to beef. Yeah. Pac was no stranger to beef as well. Right. Right? Um, they both, with the, the where, where it changes is, is Pac never got a chance to turn the corner into the lovable kind of guy that Cube was able to. Mm-hmm. We never got to see Pac become mature. anything mature. He went from Doughboy right? Boy to Are We There Yet? Right. But but they really run parallel in a lot of different ways. Like mm-hmm. these very aggressive gangster rappers, right? right? Like that's exactly what they were. They really line up, you know, sequence to sequence. Yeah. It's an interesting comparison. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. Um, <clears throat> Pac is, is, was was crazy. For 25 years old. Yeah, man. He did all this in 25 years. He did years, all man. of this. Um, like, <laughs> all of this. Man, if you, uh, so, it, it, I think if we're going to separate Juice from the other two, mm-hmm. just for the sake of just breaking down yeah, the yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Menace is very traumatizing. I get it why it can rub some people the wrong way mm-hmm. and leave a bad taste in people's mouths. I get that. Um, I, to me, I feel like I would show this to young street niggas from age 12 to 17. Yeah. I would show them this film. Menace? Yes. A, a boys too, though. Boys, boys. Too. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's hard. I don't, I don't think one is better than the other. Honestly, yeah. I think they're both necessary. I think for I agree. for uh to see a young man, I can see why Kane turned out the way he is. He wasn't doughboy. He mm-hmm. wasn't a wax. He was in the middle. He was like he wasn't a he wasn't a sucker, but he was a hood dude that was mm-hmm. eventually possibly gonna get his hands dirty. Um, we knew that Trey wasn't going wasn't going to get his hands dirty because of what he had at home. He had a man at home that was giving him the game, that was feeding him the game every day of his life, right. from age twelve to seventeen, mm-hmm. eighteen. Mm-hmm. Now, Kane was had a man at home that couldn't he could not relate to, that did not have the did not have his ear. Yep, it wasn't his father. Believe me, if Tat Samuel Jackson's character, mm-hmm. if Tat in in, in in Menace was furious. Kane would have been in the whole. Kane would have been Trey. Would have been a whole different. Yeah, he, Kane he had a. Trey. Kane had a conscience. Kane had yes, yes, had yes. some goodness to him, but yeah. he was still like, "Hey, nigga, I need a nigga. I see a nigga with some datings. I want those. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to how else to get it. Right. I'm a, I'm gonna snatch it from him. Right. Trey would never have done that. Yeah, because he knew that. He, he, and with he, the right schooling, Kane would have got a job, like Trey did. Right. 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 Exactly. So, but it makes sense when you have when you raised by your grandparents. Mm-hmm. A lot of my homies growing up didn't have the proper guidance because their grandparents were raising them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they're too grand- many generations removed. Yeah, parents, the grandparents are just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, grandparents are dealing with dialysis and diabetes and mm-hmm. uh, and strokes and shit like that. And just waking up in the morning just to go to work or just yeah. to go maintain the day for themselves at their old age. Not yeah. running around this 13-year-old, 14-year-old and making sure he or she is not doing the, the wrong shit. So- Furious had had all the smoke. He was there for that. Yeah, my father was there for that. A lot of these and Cain's grandfather. All he can do is pray and and, and quote scriptures. Yeah. that's not reality. That wasn't the answer. And he didn't know like, like dog. That's not going to get it. Yeah, that's not so, going. He needed the furious. So why do you think, like, why do you think we love hood movies, right? Like why like why are hood movies important to be made? And 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 why do we love them? I mean, it's interesting. We 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 spent the first couple of parts talking about how these movies make us feel, right? And there's one part of me is like, I love these movies because if you're not from these communities, these communities, the stories from these communities are are not often told. And right. it's important that they're told. Right. There's another part of me that goes, but if you don't come from this place this paints a picture that like you don't understand 
Right? Like, you know, like right. we understand Minnesota society. Mm-hmm. Right? But Very if you're so. if you're from St. Louis, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you look at this and you go, that's what LA is like. And you've right. heard this, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. from your travels. Like right. people who have who have used Boys in the Hood and Minnesota Society really like that? as their projection of what LA is like. Right. Right. So I understand the importance of the of the need for the stories to be told. Sometimes these movies without context, I think like, you know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not always cool with that. But what's your your perspective on like these hood movies that have been made? You know why it was important for them to be made, and and why people embrace them the way that they do. I think for for people with a boys growing up in the hood, watching boys in the hood. Mm-hmm. Once you get to a certain age, you realize oh, there are different ways out. A lot of times, kids, young men, young women can't see themselves in their life, mm-hmm. so they don't know that there's a way out. But if you watch a movie that shows a blueprint, whether the the kids in the movie follow follow that blueprint, oh, there is another option. You know, they see a Mr. Butler, they see a Furious Styles. So I know God, I know black men right now who game man who be like, bro, I wish I had a dad like Furious Styles mm-hmm. to show me the right way. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know right from wrong, but do you? Mm-hmm. When everybody around you is doing wrong, do you? You know what I'm saying? A, great, great it's a, a lot of time, I promise you, if I if I talk to some people who who can't relate, who might be from Delaware mm-hmm. or the suburbs, the suburbs, the suburbs of LA, no, 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 that's that's still because even if you're from the suburbs, you still know the difference. Yeah, like, you know because the hood is right across the street, right around the corner. But like some people who can say, nah, there's always a choice. Everyone has a choice. Hey man, I had a choice. I I can say, honestly say I had a choice. Mm-hmm. I knew I lived it. I I I talked to myself about it. Like I thought about. Being from the set, yeah, I'm just gonna go over to the niggas. They, they it would make their day if I say, "Hey, bro, they, they hop me in, jump me in." You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna get my put on right now. Um, but I said, mm-hmm. "Nah, what would the 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 the, the, the grammar for the, the ramifications is my pops will find out and he gonna lose his mind. Yeah, and he'll do some. He'll 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 go to the hood and whoop my ass in front of the homies and tell me, "Hey, hey, nigga, uh, anybody, uh, like he'll embarrass me." My you, pops is that type of dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so to answer your question, uh. I think those movies, are, these movies are made because it's, it's giving people who don't know anything about the hood an uh, inside view of it, mm-hmm. of how it is, or why these kids act the way they are, mm-hmm. uh, or the men or the women, um, and also from the perspective of other people who are living that life to see themselves. Like, yes. damn. Um, especially Kane, mm-hmm. especially um, Trey, or even Doughboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Doughboy, yeah. you can see, if you, because some people, a lot of niggas are Doughboy. Yeah. And they're like, man, if I just, maybe I can go to school. A lot of times they know what to do. Mm-hmm. They don't have the strength or the confidence. Yeah. It's like, interesting. Your brother, you can go get your GED. Yeah. You, you can go get your, your brother's taking his SATs to go to college. If your brother goes to college, what, you, what makes you think you can't? Even mm-hmm. Monster was like, man, I want a scholarship too, man. Yeah, yeah. He just saying it. He, I, don't, I don't even think he knows what to do to get a scholarship. Right. But he's Monster's asking a big for some dude. more. Go to El Camino. Yeah. Go to go to uh, LA. Uh, go to LA Community College. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go to a community college. Go play football or baseball and get you a scholarship. Monster. Yeah. But he 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 probably don't even know because nobody went to school where he's from. This is so interesting, Ja. In what you said and and what I think resonates is you know everybody's got a choice. It's almost like the argument of choice versus chance, right? Facts. Some people have a choice, but some people never had a chance. Mm-hmm. They never had a chance, right? Uh-huh. Like the circumstances in which someone came up in. Like you said, people say, you always have a choice. You always have a choice. Yeah. But if this is my reality, I don't have any choices. I never had a chance. I, ne- I never had a chance to see anything different. I never had a chance to be anything different, mm-hmm. right? Like they never had a chance. I remember- Growing up, there was a kid, me and him are the same age. Um, my you know, my grandma grew up on Marlton in LA. His mom had him early, she was addicted to drugs, he was living with his grandma, right? I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house because my parents was young and they were still out there partying. But we had two fundamental different support systems, right? He didn't have his daddy, his grandparents was old and, and angry and bitter. And life spit out two different versions of too many different, uh, two different people, right? He ended up becoming a super blood, went to jail, prison. I think I think he's in prison right now. Mm-hmm. And this was like my best friend growing up. Right. 
never had a chance. Mm-hmm. Like he never had the circumstances of his household were not incumbent for him to do heart versus me. I had all the choice and options in the world. Right. I had all the options in the yeah. world. At a bare minimum, I was going to church and getting some sort of sense of right and wrong, right. Consequences. I mean, church is maybe like one of the first times you see black men in suits. Facts. Right? Like, you know, Facts. so and you see decorum. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you you see, you know, how people conduct themselves. Right. If you don't even have that, most of us don't have black teachers or black principals mm-hmm. or anything like that. All you know is what you know. And that's what it is. And that's what, to a certain extent, menace does a fantastic job of saying, this is what the environment will do. Boys in the Hood does it too. It's not as direct and as it's visceral not, right. as the way that menace does it. Right. It seems, I, f- I feel like um, Doughboy was a regular kid at first. Yeah. And he went to he went to jail or YA mm-hmm. for stealing, which a lot of boys steal and a lot of boys go to YA because of it. And a lot of times the the, the YA makes you worse. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. My cousin went to YA and he came back worse. I saw it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's my big cousin. I'm watching him. And the things he learned when he came back from, from YA, mm-hmm. from Juvenile Hall, I was like, Oh shit! What are you learning to say up in here, nigga? Yeah, do this, nigga. Learn how to do tattoos, and but I mean that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like he he learned Would that pick along up skills. with other shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he learned how to just be worse. He mm-hmm. he learned how to really fight better. He learned how to fight better. So now at that point, I saw him just very hitting everybody, mm-hmm. punching on everybody he didn't know all the time. I'm like, damn, nigga. Mm-hmm. He's he, but he came out active as hell. Yeah. Um. And he didn't even game bang at first. He came out and joined the gang. Because in, in YA, you got to be affiliated you with somebody. You got to be affiliated, right? He was affiliated, so he was doing a lot of fighting. So when he got mm-hmm. out, out, he was like, I, I got to join the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, men, boys is more comforting. The dose of realness is more tolerable yeah. than the menace. Menace is down your throat. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. From from the jump, you see a little boy watch his, his father kill somebody. Yeah. In, in, yeah. In, in, this is true. You know what I'm saying? In his own house. And so yep. you see him, uh, you know, the the older homie put a gun in his hand and he's like seven years old. Mm-hmm. So it's like. And that shit happens. It's reality. And I can see how some folks be like, yeah, bro, I don't want to. I, I, I want the story, but I don't want the real story. That, that. That graphic, but that's what filmmaking is supposed to be. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's and that's why I love the film so much. Not to glorify the, the street violence or the game banging and no shit like that, because mm-hmm. I I didn't game bang on purpose. Right, you know what I'm saying I don't believe I I, mean, I know it's real, but I feel for those who feel like that's what they had to do. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm some people couldn't wait to do it. Some kids had choices and they chose the game bang. Yeah, some kids didn't have a choice. They had or they might they had a choice didn't have a chance. And that's why we that's why I think when these movies were made. While we flocked to them because a we wanted to see ourselves, right, right. Um, I mean, for us especially, we was growing up in it. We we was living it. Um, it's interesting because, like, some people like colors, and some people hate colors. The movie I'm referring mm-hmm. to, right? Okay. Um, you know, because colors is the f- like the first time somebody tries to film this world. But the wrong people have the camera, right? right? And it's like copaganda. It's all from the cops' perspective, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, and the gangbangers and the people in the hood, everybody is just like these, like, mindless, soulless, super predator murderers, right? <laughs> like, you know, but Colors is the first time that it taps into the hood. Right. And and Colors taps into, like, a lot of it. Like, we get into the essay shit. Yeah. We get into Bloods. We get into Cribs. You know, we get yeah. to... Um, Boys in the Hood, I think, is the first time that the story is told from from an interesting perspective. And I think Boys in the Hood does, like, a lot of things. Like, it's the first time I'd ever heard about gentrification mm-hmm. was from, from Boys in the Hood. Right. And the breaking down of, like, why do you think it's fucking like this here? We don't own any boats. We don't own any any, any planes. We don't Facts. own any, any, any ships. So, like, they did a great job of that, you know, it's just the, the two messages, right, of, of Boys in the Hood and Menace. So I ask you another quick question, which is from a time where, like, hood movies were 
so important. For me, it seems like we like they stopped making them. Right. You st- like like I don't know when the last like signature hood movie, like the last popular or important hood hood movie was made. But at a certain point in time, like they were making a bunch of them. Like with anything, the quality starts to dip. Right. Because you know studios are just kind of tossing out money it becomes like the 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 black exploitation era but why do you think like hood movies do you think hood movies stop being made in mass and and if so why do you think that is or if you're wrong like nope hood movies have always been here they're here to stay what's your thought about like what happened after these movies kind of get released hood, mov- hood movies are still being made on Netflix Hulu you can mm-hmm. see them all the time they're just not as important mm-hmm. as they used to be I mean, like mm. the directors aren't the black. There, there aren't as many big time black directors, in my opinion, that are being are are given the opportunity to put their film on the for on the forefront of 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 Hollywood. Yeah, you know, um, case in point, you would. Uh, but the, and it's a little different when you have TV shows. Yes, a movie to me is like a story. A TV show is more like. Well, it was, it was, the Snowfall was actually a story. That was a great, a great mm-hmm, series. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> it's equivalent to like, give me somebody like um, who's like Nipsey. If Nipsey was still alive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Nipsey would tell a, uh, there would be a movie. He would produce a film or ha- team up with a Ryan Coogler or a, a new filmmaker, ideally from LA, because. Mm-hmm. The, for someone from LA. That's why it was his films are so dope. The Hughes brothers are from California, Southern California. I think the IE, mm-hmm. um, and 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 uh, uh, John Singleton's from South Central, I believe. Yep. So these are being told and written by by, by men who who live this life, on, on, on whether whichever role they're in. They might not be the game banger, but they're the game banger's cousin or the mm-hmm. homeboy or the neighbor mm-hmm. or something like that. So they're not being made as much anymore because those movies were impactful. Those movies are very violent films, but they're very they had messages. Yeah. And I think I saw the message as a kid. Yeah. I saw the message. Hundred percent. Even though I think there were more the mes- the messages were more deliberate in um in boys. Yeah. So I get why you could say it's a better film. Mm-hmm. The message that 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 message in the in the schoolyard and the school the classroom with Mr. Butler, Sharif, and Kane was very important. Yes, very strong, and even even the but with boys there was like maybe five or six for yeah. every one message in, in minutes yeah. there were like two three. Boys, boys in the hood is heavy handed, right? Heavy-handed. Like you know, like like. When they've got a point that they want to make, they make that point. Right. Right? You know, Trey, you know, the the black man has no place in the white man's army. Right? Just That's nuggets. the point that they're trying no. to make. Right? Mm-hmm. Of course, Furious' is speech, you know what I mean, in, in the vacant. Mm-hmm. There's a point that he's trying to make. Like, there's some shit the Doughboy says. Like, there's a, like, they're, yeah. they're really making sure that they hit the points. Menace, they, I, only, I almost forgot. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You got it. I was like, uh. There was a time where the father, the grandfather, asked him about, uh, um, do, "Do we believe in God? Do you believe in God?" Yeah, that that, that was a point too. And uh, Cain said, "To be honest, all due respect, sir, I don't believe that God. I don't think there's a God. Mm-hmm. I don't think He would have us live like this." Yeah, yeah. That's a real perspective from a real kid growing up in Watts. I love it. Are in LA, so I love it. And they have the same conversation in Boys in the Hood. Exactly. Right. Why we? Yeah. They they they, they have like. It's such a great point about the absence of God in both of these films, right? Like, because they have the conversation of, do you believe in God and menace of society, da 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 And, of course, he's the preacher. And, and it's like, listen, I just don't give, don't believe God gives a damn. Right. And then Doughboy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, sun, moon, stars, quasars, think it sound like yeah. Roy Jetson. Right. Ain't no God. If there was a God... Why you be letting niggas get smoked every night in the street? Right? You know what I mean? Boom. Like, you know, like that's the point right there. Like, these guys have no hope. They've got no opportunity. They've got no chance. They've got no God. They have no God. They got no God. They think they're already in hell. Bro, if you sit, if you don't have any, you've never been on vacation with the family. You've never got told I love you from your father. Or your mother, mm-hmm. or um, or see your mom do anything good. You see your, your mom happy, like she was never happy. Yeah, 
but Doe Boy and, 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 and Rick's mom was never happy. Um, they, there was no father over there. You know what I'm saying? There was no, there was nothing to look forward to. Kane woke up. He, he knew he was taking, he knew he was, his grandparents were taking care of him because they had to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Old dog didn't, he stayed with different homies. He didn't even have a place of his own. Right. He was 17 years old. Um, so there was, there's, some of these kids don't have any bright spots in their lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, that's why he or she, I don't give a fuck. I'll kill anybody. It don't matter because there's no, there's no, they have nothing else to compare. Mm-hmm. There's no other good life that they could ever expect to have or have ever seen before. So even I got homies who I grew up with, they're like, bro, well, what's the point am I going to school for? For what? Nigga, all, all, all I'm going to do is be on the block. Mm-hmm. I've heard people actually say that in my, with my own ears in the seventh grade. Yeah. Nah, man. I'm about to I'm gonna stop going to school. Why? My parents didn't finish school. Mm-hmm. Why would I finish school? I, I want you to be better than me. For what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <sighs> yeah, bro. So, of these two movies, Boys in the Hood and Menace, which universe would you want to return to? Either as a sequel, prequel, you know, 10, you know, 10 episode series on HBO or Netflix. Of of these of these two movies, what story do you want to tell? Menace. Menace. Let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. They killed off Ricky. They killed off Doe Boy. Those that's the movie right there. Trey is already going to college. He's yeah. already going to Morehouse. Yeah. That's not that interesting. What's interesting is seeing Old Dog change. That's I'm in agreement. Imagine Old Dog at 17. Mm-hmm. He's Old Dog needs to sit down. Yeah. Same, the same thing I said about Bishop, <laughs> mm-hmm. old, dog, old dog needs to sit down. He needs to go to jail. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to go to the prison. Yeah, for what he's done. Yeah, and he needs to get out at 27, 30, You know what I'm saying? Thirty five, and just a different person. Mm-hmm. Trying and now he's even he's Sharif, but even more knowledge and more intent. Sharif was doing. He was, Sharif was a kid too. You got to find a better way to get to these guys. They don't respect you anymore. They love you. Mm-hmm. They don't respect you. They don't know how to respect that. And you're not giving you're not giving them anything. You're just like Kane's grandfather. You're just preaching to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta find another way to, to um, get, get a hold of me. I so I, I agree. I think I think old dogs, I think the old dog story is the most interesting story. Mm-hmm. But I think it also be really interesting is the story of Ricky's son. Oh, right. Like that's how you could. That's now look at those circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. No father, you know, father murdered, uncle murdered, you know, raised by these bodies, two women. He's about to be raised. Baby girl about to be a prostitute. Mm hmm. Baby girl either or she's going to be strung out. Yeah. Because she's going to be heartbroken. She gets so much trauma. She's going she's to turn mm-hmm. to the wrong dude. Right. She's already living at their house. Mm-hmm. Correction. She might not be a prostitute. I don't want to put that on there. Yeah. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but, but, things, but are, things are going to be tough. Based off of how she's a young mom. She gave them, And it's going to be a gang of sadness. She, she gave the draws up in high school. She's yeah. a young teenage mom. Yeah. Her boyfriend gets murdered. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and her, her son sees that the blood, blood and this and the other. Mm-hmm. She might not go home, but she's going to be on, potentially be on drugs. Like, for example, what is the female that's walking down the street? Mm-hmm. That was asking um, yeah. Doughboy for the bread. She yeah. had a, her baby of her own. She had a baby of her own. At one point in time, she wasn't a drug addict. Yes. What did she do? What happened in her what life? What happened in her life? And who? And so what I'm saying is, I'm not putting it on Ricky's girlfriend, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying is she, somebody, girls, or before they become drug addict females, yeah. like yeah. they were something else. Yeah. She could easily have been that chick and then- Fast forward to three years later. Now Ricky's mm. son is Ricky Junior is now uh, four. Yeah, and, the, and he's he's being taken care of his grandmother mm-hmm. by his grandmother, and the grandmother's like, yeah, his mom once once Ricky passed, and yeah. the mom started doing that Cause stuff because the house is surrounded in pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and Trey, who she would who would be a surrogate father if he cares enough about this kid? You know what I mean? Like you know, could could be you know he could play the furious role. But mm-hmm. the real question is, is that even at that age, by the time Trey gets back from Atlanta, where is this kid? Where he, is he? He's a young, he's an old dog. Yes. He's not Kane. Yes. He's not, he's not Ricky. He's an old dog. Yeah. 
being raised by his grandmother that was already fed up before mm-hmm. he was even born. Yeah. That's those are the, the 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 two worlds that are most interesting to me. I love I would love to see either O Dog's revenge tour, which we kind of talked about, <laughs> like, you know, like you know, John Wick, John Wick, and you know what I mean. Oh, but I, I could also. He was a youngster too. He was yeah. Michael Jackson of that little crew. Yeah, I'd also be very interested in. I mean, like, there's so much story. There's so much meat on the bone left with Odog. Yeah, because he's he's got he's a, seventeen. Yeah, he and, lived, and he's got, you know, the police looking for him. He's got revenge to get. He's got maturing to do. It's very so this interesting. This is what he does. Mm-hmm. Doughboy is dead. Ricky's dead. And we saw what happened to Trey. Yeah. He moved to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Old Dog goes to Atlanta as well. Or he might not because Ronnie goes to, she takes her son to Atlanta by herself and she mm-hmm. raises him. Mm-hmm. Old Dog goes to Kansas with Stacy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if old dog, I I, I want to say this in in the uh, the Boys in the Hood uh, podcast mm-hmm. episode, I did I forgot to say it. Old dog, if Doughboy lives, old dog go. Oh, Doughboy goes to Columbus University, and he's a five five year student, a five year uh, uh, senior. Ha! <laughs> I love that multiverse. Yes, I love that multiverse yeah, because that's, that energy is still there. Yeah, yeah. He's not a hoe. Mm-hmm. I'm not a gangbanger. I'm not a gangster no more. I'm not, I'm a, I'm gonna fight with my brain now as right. opposed to my my gun. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying my brother got laid down, mm-hmm. and and um I was able to avenge his death. Yeah. But I got up out of there in order, in order for me to to, to uh, I had to go to college. I had to go to school. I had it's to graduate. Very interesting. Just like Blade Brown did. Yeah. Yeah. You got to let you out of prison. Yeah. You got to you got to graduate from college from high right. school. Right. He got out of high school. And so Doughboy goes back to college, gets his G- go back to high school, gets, gets his GED, mm-hmm. and transferred to Columbus uh, University. That's a great, that's a great connection mm-hmm. because it makes sense. Because like, you know, Doughboy has a bit of mystery to him. He's got, yes. he certainly has an edge to him, mm-hmm. and he's already got an appetite for reading and knowledge. He says as much, right? You know what I mean? How'd you get so big? And nothing to do but you know, lift weights and read. Yeah, read. I can't read, motherfucker. I'm not yeah. a criminal. Right. Um. That's super interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a couple of little tw- little quick hitters for you. Let's do it. Right? Lighten it up a little bit. So, um, what's the deepest line from the movies? Ooh. The deepest line. It's so many. Yeah, I know. It's hard, bro. I, Come on, I know. Man. What you got? Like, what well, line? Well, okay. What, uh, boys, let's start there because that, that was first. Uh, uh. Um, damn, you got one? Are you are, are you asking me mm-hmm. to start the conversation? Or are you asking me to? For me, I just gave you fucking ten seconds of just yeah. no silence. My fault. No, but, uh, no, no. But you was I thinking, was thinking. It and I was thinking through it too. For me, the best line is either they don't know, don't, don't show, show, or don't care about what's, what's going, going on in the hood. hood. Yeah, but I do think that like. The hunt is on, and you're to pray. That's one of the is, strongest. Is the lines. best line across both movies. Man, I think it's the best line because across both movies. A lot of times, we so we so busy trying to be the hardest nigga in our hood, mm-hmm. the hardest nigga in L.A. Like, bro, you are a pet. You are a prey, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You are a prey. Yeah, and you you're doing exactly what they want us to do. You know what I'm saying, kill each other off, be the tightest, hardest nigga with the best squabbles, with mm-hmm. the best. With, I don't care about busting my gun. In the hood, and uh, you do you you're you're, you're part of the plan. Okay, and niggas gonna be understanding you. The hunters on you are the prey. What is the most questionable decision that was made across both movies? Ooh, the Question- most questionable decision. The most questionable decision. Uh, I want to say going to get the cornmeal. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga, baby girl, she, all right, yeah. so this is why she, I, I, she didn't go, she's not a prostitute, but she yeah. is going to go into drugs. Yeah. She feels guilty. Because she sent them she out. She sent there. her boyfriend out she to get cornmeal. He, he came shot. back. And came yeah. back there. Yeah. Um, I feel like the decision to split up. Woo. I, I feel like, I feel like. It's not the, you, you split up when it's the police, maybe. Yeah. But when it's the rival niggas trying to fight you or yeah. get to you, you want to stay together. 
I feel like the alley s- still wasn't a safe space. Like, you know, There's like... There's two openings. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I felt like they should have kept going through backyards to backyards. I got, I got one even further. Mm-hmm. Another, the worst decision ever yeah. is to run in a straight line yeah. down the alley. Yeah. If you don't hop this fence and go that way, mm-hmm. they can't shoot over the fence. See, and I thought about this. And, and so, because Singleton slows it down, I think it gives it the illusion that this wasn't a bang-bang situation. I think in real time, without the slow-mo, the car pulls up and Ricky just has enough time to turn around. And they start letting off. Yeah. It's like, like brr, boom, bam, yeah. boom. Like, I think, like, like because it's slow, because we cut to Trey, Trey turns, eyes get wide, Ricky, cut back to Rick, yeah. Rick drops his, it gives the illusion. It was two to three seconds. It was of, literally, they pulled up, as they knew they were in the alley. The, mm-hmm. It it wasn't like they stopped and was like they knew them niggas was gonna be in the alley. When they saw them hopping the gate, he said, yeah. "Cut them off, cut yep. them off." They knew that they knew right you when it was gonna be. You know, in the hood, where you, yep. you know, but yeah. So I feel like a lot of people have said that over the years. Like, why didn't Ricky like zigzag? Zigzag. I just think there was no time. Okay. Like they they was on them, and they pulled up basically blasting. Um, but yeah, I think the decision to either stay in that alley. Or to split up, was you know, decision. was 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 the poor decision. And I almost feel like, see, this is like it goes back to like Ricky's not really being aware of the circumstances. And like you said, you know where you are. Trey, I think, knew which way to go to avoid them. So like the like he said it. Hey man, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna break as soon as they get to that. Way. But even then, when they were in the alley, like when they were in the alley and they decided to go two different ways. Ricky, think about it. Think of th- Ricky's got to be one of the dumbest characters ever, because <laughs> dumbass. After they, after y'all live on the same block, we live on the same, going block. The same place. We go in the same place. Not only does he turn after being chased through the streets, he goes back to the scratcher. He doesn't see it coming. He doesn't understand. Trey is very concerned. Keeps looking back and knows which kind of way to drift to to avoid trouble. But I feel like. Them stopping in that in that alley and not keeping their head on a swivel, thinking that thinking that the danger is over, is the most questionable decision. Yeah, because that's not realistic. You know yeah. where you at. You live here. Yes. And you know they're looking for you. Right. And you see them. Yep. You see them. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh who's the most gangster? Ooh. Is it is it? Is it Doughboy or is it uh, Old Dog? Um, Old Dog. Yeah. Old Dog. Old Dog for sure. Like you said before, um, at the at the Crenshaw, mm-hmm. at the Strip, where they all, you know what I'm saying? Old Dog with Chris, a shot. Crenshaw on Sundays. Yeah. As soon as the nigga said, is there a problem? That That's not what Old Dog would have said. Mm-hmm. He would have pulled his gun out. And said, fuck y'all niggas and started letting off. Bow, yeah. Bow, bow. yeah. Um, he's not shooting in the air. And when a nigga shoot in the air, he has his piece. He's not hopping in his whip and getting out of there. He's mm-hmm. shooting back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So old dog is not the smartest, but he's definitely um he's definitely the most, the, uh, the most gangster. Um what's the funniest line from from Across these movies. Across the funniest line? The funniest line. Even though, even though these movies are not, no laughing matter. But, right, it's you know, crazy. What's the fun, what, um, what, if, there is a, if there is a funny line, what is it? Uh, hey, man, let the women eat. Yeah. Hoes got to eat, too. Hoes got to eat, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's one. Yeah. Um, don't forget about the, uh, uh, and Menace, where he was like, um, what did he say? Dang. <laughs> when the dude was like, he went to go pick up the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Mexican homie was like, hey, man, he said, you got the brace to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a lie. Yeah. I, as a kid, I just thought that was a hilarious. Uh-huh. Yeah. He just cut them off and yeah. shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, um, what he say? 
It's me, such such a uh, faggot ass Chauncey. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Paul, I know I can't say that word no more. <laughs> but that's back in the day where you you can mm-hmm, say that word mm-hmm. and it didn't mean as bad as it means now. Right, right, right. Or it's not taken as bad as it's, it's taken now. Right. Um, but Chauncey, uh, when he was like, "Come back around." Ten thirty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten, ten thirty. That stutter. It slapped him. Get out of here. Yeah. Um. I like. I like. Uh. Um. You know. You know. Fucked up. Right. Yeah. About. I, I About I the beer. <laughs> I, you know. You fucked up. You know. You fucked up. Right. That part is funny. Uh. Regina King. Uh. Laughing at at uh at Brandy. Um, the along, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. does, does he have a girlfriend? Yes. Ah! Like, you know, like uh-huh. that part is like always uh hella funny to me. Right. Um, and then it's not a line, but in but in Trey's story, the way the niggas was was hopping off the curb when the car grew up, and they was like, like, you know, what I mean? like, oh, like say it again. Like, all right, so remember when Trey is is, is telling uh his daddy the story about when he got yeah, yeah, yeah. He was out on the Chris girls pull up on Chris and, pull up, and then and then <laughs> get the, get the <laughs> like slow mowing yeah. off the, like and one guy's like, You're the finest woman I've ever seen. Like right. that part already always cracks me up yeah, too. Yeah, that's stupid. Over over the top. Yeah. Mom yeah. he was like, I guess mom smelled the sex in the air. Yeah. And no. She came up with the machete. Yeah. Nah, come nah, on, bro. Come on now. Yeah, stop it. Um, who's the We'll end it with this one. Out of the cruise, who do you give the ride or die award to? Oh. That's tough, nigga. Because mm-hmm. Doughboy, he was with the business. Yeah. Old Dog was with the business. Old Dog was with the business. I think that, I think it's a tie between the two because they both for the road. Neither one of them had, neither one of them would have been like, nah, next time. You know who I think. I agree. That's a great point. I'm gonna give you a, a a third horse in the race to consider. Monster. Mm-hmm. See the thing with Old Dog. Old Dog was with the shits, but Old Dog had a lot to say, and I think because he had a lot to say, it you know kind of peacocked him out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know we don't get we don't you know, like but Go to not yeah. kill these niggas and then kill your cousin. Yeah, but Monster was a silent assassin. You knew he was with the shits. He didn't need to say nothing nigga, about it. Putting the AK-47 putting the together, AK, nigga. Yeah. And, and this is how you knew he was a real one. After he finished putting all the bullets in the clip and slammed the clip into the gun, he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we ready, now nigga. We ready. Yeah, now mm-hmm. I'm ready to kill a motherfucker. Man, he was That's like, it. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, man, where these motherfuckers at? Yeah. It's cold in the motherfucker yeah, out here. Right. And put a beanie on it. He was cold mm-hmm. and he was hungry. He was cold and he was hungry. And he was looking for niggas to murder. And listen, and and no hesitation, Dookie goes, there the niggas go there. Oh, yeah, nigga. Monster goes, hit, hit the, the lights, lights, nigga. Nigga, hit the lights. Hit the lights, nigga. Like, here they go. They what? ready. Nigga, and he and it was no no question. He pulled up mm-hmm. and let off. That was it. Um, yeah, dog. Yeah. Monster. Monster was with the business. He's kind of, he, you know, he's like, yeah. like, I would, I would want, if I had to choose, this is, you know, now we might, I might as well be in the MCU. Uh, but if I had to mm-hmm. choose someone to ride with me, I would want, I would want Monster to ride with me more so than Old Dog. Cause he was ready to leave. He wasn't reckless. He did mm-hmm. his shit. Yeah. And it's gonna, Old Dog it's, is going to do something reckless. He's going to do something dumb. Yeah. He's going to do something dumb. He's going to do something emotional. Right? So, correction. So, correction. You asked me who's the most gangster. Yeah. The most gangster is probably Monster. Probably Monster. Um, um, because he didn't he didn't do nothing dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then no, I still gotta go with Doughboy. Yeah. Because if they would have left like they were trying to get Doughboy to do, mm-hmm. they would have left one nigga alive. Yes. Unless he bled out and died, we wouldn't have known. So but so I, so the guy Ferris, here's what's interesting. Ferris's wounds look to be like he might be able to survive. Right. He's grabbing his abdomen. You know what I mean? But, like, he's in better shape than the other two. The other guy, you know what I mean, is basically just, you know, crawling his way. Blum. Right. I think he's done for. That's the nigga you turn around. Yeah. But because I, he's the one that pulled the trigger. Yeah. But I think I think that Doughboy was able to figure out that we didn't get Ferris the way we needed to. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not like, done. He's not he done. Moves, he moves still. Yeah. He get out the car, nigga. And it was, and it, and it was personal. 
It's personal. It was, it, it, it was per- he. I think he had to make sure that that this is what happened. And I think you know, it's a, it's an un, it's a unknowable thing, but like. Was Ferris's people the people that end up killing Doughboy? Probably. Yes. This is why. It was only three niggas with Ferris. Two mm-hmm. niggas with Ferris. Mm-hmm. The driver, Ferris, and the shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, those three niggas end up dead, what, that night? Yeah. For sure. And these niggas are talking about me. We're going to find them motherfuckers to peel the niggas back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so when they end up dying the same day they, they do their shit, mm-hmm. the hood knows all oh, them niggas must have turned back around and yep. got the niggas. Because the hood knows that Ricky, the hood knows that, the hood knows all of the information. Mm-hmm. The hood knows that the Ricky and Ferris got, you know, had ran into that, that beef on Crenshaw. Mm-hmm. It was here. Right? We know that Ricky gets killed the next day. And Ferris and him get killed the next day. No, it's, that night. That night. That night. It's very easy to draw a straight line to Doughboy. And they talking just like uh uh um Regina King's character was talking about Ferris. Mm-hmm. They over there on their hood. Yeah. The other chick talking about when she was like, can we ever have one night where ain't nobody trying to trying mm-hmm. to hurt each other? And mm-hmm. shut up, bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's over there talking about that nigga Doughboy. Do- always, yeah, Doughboy, such a Ricky ain't yeah. really the problem, but yeah. like Doughboy is. Doughboy, he called me a bitch. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Because they knew each other, right? Like yeah. they, they knew enough for Regina King's character to be able to tell you who Ferris is. They knew his age, nigga, 27 years old, still fucking together. with us. Yeah, right. Boom. So, uh, Doughboy, uh, so what happened was um, your boy, uh, Ricky. Brandy, not Brandy. Brandy went to uh St. Bernard's. Mm-hmm. She went to Burner. Yeah, she, she went yeah. to Burner. She went to Burner. I'm saying, uh, but Ricky and um, uh, Trey mm-hmm. went, to Crenshaw. went to Crenshaw, and though boy, he didn't graduate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He might have got a GED in 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 prison, like right. as he be reading. Right. Um, Ferris and his niggas went to Dorsey. Mm. That's what happened. That they all know each other. They all went to Horse yep. Man. Yep. They all went yep. to Fifty yep. Ninth Street Elementary. They yep. all. Went to Audubon yep. and Dublin, and, and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They all went to Fauche and shit like that, and they end up going to Dorsey and Crenshaw. Mm-hmm. So now, now they they're, now they on the strip, they bump into each other. This this nigga got a Crenshaw uh, uh, jacket on. Yep, move, bitch ass nigga. Yeah, they all know each other. You know, I went to Dublin. Did you? Mm-hmm. I went out of bond. Yeah, went to Dublin to the third grade. That's crazy. I yeah. went out of bond, man. Yeah. I went to Forty Second Elementary School. Yeah, and out of bond. We got to do more comparison shows like this. I'm with that. Yeah. Juice and something else. Yeah. We'll do Juice and something else. I just and feel then, like Juice wouldn't have got to share fake. Yeah. It's, it's fair shake. Yeah. And then we'll have, you know, like we'll do a, a, some comparisons on the rom-coms. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, we'll we'll find opportunities mm-hmm. after we watch them to do this breakdown. But this yeah. is a good breakdown. Like Good breakdown. Just two really good movies. That So, th- let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. You said before that Boys in the Hood was demonstrably. Better is that still your take? Like demonstrously, I feel like no. Okay, like my my, I feel like Boys in the Hood is a better movie. Okay, and I feel like if you look at it from a wide variety of of, of metrics, you can find proof that Boys in the Hood is a better movie. If we talk about mm. box office, right? Like you know, but that that would make a better movie. That's yeah. the more successful movie is yeah. different. Yeah, successful. Um, no, I think I think we unpacked what I came from, mm-hmm. which is you know the theory about Boys in the Hood being a significantly better movie. I think kind of comes from personal perspective, right? Right, like you know, personal right. personal uh, perspective. Um, yeah, I think I I think Boys in the Hood is better on some very specific things. Which might lead you. I think it's a. I think it's better shot, right? I you think, think boys is. I think boys is. I think. Oh, I think. No. I think boys is a better script. I think boys has more character development. I these agree are, with that. These are all that. things that I agree. But I think overall, like we talked about, there's a rawness that like menace of society doesn't need all of those things to work, and the fact that it doesn't have those things and as impactful as it is. Maybe maybe means a little bit more right. than what I was giving it credit for. I want I want us, us to watch Boys and Menace together. Yeah, and look at how it's shot. I think Menace is shot better. Okay, so that's what I mean. If we like, if we watched it from and we take all the subjective shit out the out the way, 
and we look at it just purely as shots. filmmakers and shots yeah. and decisions. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. And camera angles yeah. and shit, camera movement. Because you could school me. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. like, like, you're a filmmaker. Right. Um, I, w- I watch a ton of film. Yeah. So we both bring an eye. For sure. Right? Like, sure. you know. And I respect it too. Yeah, but you might be able to tell me something that I'm overlooking in minutes and be like, you don't even understand how complicated that shot was. Or right. you don't understand Facts. like the decision to mm. do that. This yeah. will give you more perspective. Right. Right? True. I'm with it. All right, man. Real quick. So we, we're not doing Black Fist. They, they're both Black Fist movies to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forget what you said about minutes. I can't remember what you said. I think you I said five. five. I gave yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Five and five. But question to you guys. The question is, what movie is better? Do you think that Boys to Men... Wow, boys wow. to men, boys in the hood. It's better boys. than Jodeci. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one too. <laughs> Jodeci is great, but they ain't fucking with boys to men. Yeah. Um, but boys in the hood or men in society. Which two? What do you think is the better film? If you had to say one was better, I don't think I, I love them both. Um, but if I had to choose, mm-hmm. I still couldn't. I don't know. It is too many. Gr- Fury Styles is such a great character. Yeah. yeah. A necessary character for boys, so it's hard for me yeah. to go against that. But I'm but, curious as to as to what what the audience thinks. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. Um, yeah, man. So this is another episode of Blackbusters. Um, I'm your your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. multi toned, multi toned. Yeah, and uh, we just we just did a, a, our first comparison, Blackbuster comparison to uh, Men's Society and Boys mm-hmm. in the Hood, and I'm sure. The, the, the debate and the conversation will continue as we go. Uh, thank you all for tapping in and tuning in. Check us next time out. And in, in, in the meantime, be good or be good at it. Love, life, peace. We out. Pew to the max. Blackbusters.